LeBron James, Kevin Durant, Stephen Curry. These three future Hall of Famers carry immense weight in NBA history. They form the most dominant trio in at least the past decade, claiming 10 championships, 6 MVP awards, and 7 finals MVPs between the years 2010 to 2022. They dominated their era, and the three superstars have always seemed connected. In this season, that remains true. However, the current scenario is quite different from the decade past. Things are altered in today's NBA. Their respective teams are teetering on the edge of the Western Conference, and the vital signs of the Warriors, Lakers, and Suns are mixed. As this season approaches the midway point, there's a real possibility that one, two, or perhaps all three might miss the 2024 playoffs. This puts these all-time greats at a significant intersection. Despite being among the league's finest, the trio is older. Stephen Curry and Kevin Durant are both 35 years old, and LeBron James recently turned 39. And while they still find themselves in familiar territory, securing spots in the upcoming All-Star game, the positioning of their teams make their situations different from the norm. At the time this video is published, the Suns sit at the 8th position, the Lakers in the 10th position, and the Warriors are outside of the playing game as the 12th seed in the West. So, how did they collectively end up so unsteadily positioned in the lower ranks of the Western standings? Let's dive into that. But first, we're so close to reaching 1,000 subscribers. If you haven't already, please subscribe. And thank you. Let's start with LeBron. For a 21st season, what LeBron James is doing on an individual level is unprecedented. His overall performance and physical condition remains excellent, and the 39-year-old continues to rank among the league leaders in points and assists. But LeBron, while still great, has inevitably lost a slight step when it comes to quickness and overall physicality, enough of a loss that he doesn't have it in him to drag an underperforming team to the top of the standings like years past. Recently, the Lakers secured victory in the inaugural in-season tournament, a stark departure from the overall tone of their season. During a pair of games in Las Vegas, the Lakers displayed championship-worthy potential, resembling contenders for June. However, both before and after that brief triumph, their performance as a team has been underwhelming at best. It's perplexing to witness a team boasting a healthy LeBron James and Anthony Davis, who are both playing well, yet the team as a unit struggles to gain momentum. The availability of these franchise players was a significant uncertainty at the season's outset. LeBron's age, combined with AD's injury history, seemed like the biggest question mark going into the season but neither has really been a big issue. Surprisingly, aside from Austin Reeves, well, sometimes Austin Reeves, the supporting cast has failed to deliver the impact expected, the impact needed. This is especially strange considering the crucial roles these players had in the Lakers' journey to the conference finals in the 2023 playoffs. Several of those core bench players remain, with additions like Christian Wood and Gabe Vincent, but the role players continue to struggle. Unfortunately, subpar defense and inconsistent shooting are proving detrimental to the Lakers' success. Typically, the current circumstances wouldn't trigger panic for LA, but the stakes are higher than usual. The Lakers are operating on a shortening championship timeline with LeBron because his future with the Lakers is uncertain, and so is the certainty anyone can have that he will continue to play at this level as he ages. It seems that the Lakers' best option is to continue to have a win-now attitude. That means pursuing premier talent at the trade deadline. While trading away future assets always seems difficult, the question remains, do the Lakers have any other choice? Can they win with their current roster? I guess only time will tell. At certain moments, Kevin Durant looks like the most exceptional player on the court, unaffected by his teammates. Continuously showing his scoring prowess, Durant maintains an impressive average of almost 30 points per game, with a remarkable 47.4% accuracy from beyond the arc. His lethal pull-up mid-range jumper and adeptness at finishing around the rim still places him among the league's best scorers. Additionally, with nearly six assists per game, he surpasses his career average, solidifying his status as one of the most challenging players to defend in the game. 
The Phoenix Suns were designed to be title contenders, but the opposing teams aren't exactly convinced. A significant factor contributing to this is evident, the combined absence of Durant, Devin Booker, and Bradley Beal. They have missed a combined 40 games. It's just recently that the trio has shared significant time on the court together. The starting point to their struggles is undoubtedly the injuries. The Suns heavily rely on their core three, and any games missed by these key players may result in adverse outcomes, given the notable talent gap between them and the rest of the team. But beyond health issues, the Suns are navigating through a learning curve, discovering themselves on the go. They haven't excelled or faltered significantly in any aspect, but this assessment is somewhat skewed due to the ongoing absence of key players. Two lingering questions persist. One, do they need a true point guard? Currently, no such player exists on the roster, or at least not someone capable of handling substantial minutes. And two, what can they do about their defense? At the time of this video, the Suns are ranked 16th in the league when it comes to defense. While 16th is just below league average, having personally watched several Suns games, I can attest, their defense is unimpressive. And I'm not sure if their offense makes up for that blaring weakness. All in all, deciphering Phoenix's current situation proves challenging. Despite the team's evident star power, and the potential for improved health, their trajectory remains uncertain. In direct comparison, these factors might grant them the advantage over the Lakers and Warriors. However, similar to those rival teams, their current standings imply that they cannot afford an extended period of setbacks. The consequences of such a stumble will be significant. Now let's look at Steph and the Warriors. Stephen Curry's performance thus far reflects another commendable effort characterized by consistency and efficiency. He maintains an average of nearly 27 points per game, coupled with just under 40% shooting from beyond the arc. While Curry has had his moments of greatness this season, he's also had moments of unusualness. Steph has had several challenging games of late including a 2 of 14 shooting night against the Raptors and a 3 of 15 game against the Heat. While off nights are common for NBA players, they seem to be coming more frequently than usual for the one-of-a-kind point guard, and the Warriors need him now more than ever. As for the Warriors this season, it stands as the most disappointing start in the Curry era, especially considering the absence of major injuries. The Warriors have been relatively healthy, their core faces internal conflicts with Draymond Green suspensions and Klay Thompson altering between solid and suspect performances, and most of the time suspect. Consequently, the Warriors find themselves trailing behind younger and more determined teams in the Western Conference, 11 teams in particular, including the Sacramento Kings who they eliminated in last year's playoffs. The challenges are evident. One in particular is integrating younger talents like Jonathan Kaminga. Adding to the Warriors' woes, Chris Paul is sidelined for at least a few weeks following a hand surgery, and Andrew Wiggins has struggled to replicate his performances of the past. While I'd love to offer a suggestion for what the Warriors can do to climb out of the hole they've dug themselves, their questionable off-season moves and holding on to the past seems to have placed the Warriors in an unavoidable situation. The only thing that seems clear with Golden State is that something needs to change. Thanks for watching, and again, we're getting really close to the 1000 subscriber mark. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Thanks for watching, Basketball Pantheon.